Dennis, I'm going to just jump in here and, uh, sure. and, and ask you what you would say to some of the criticisms of your proposed bill here. For example, we were speaking to Chris Whalen earlier on today from uh, Carrington Investment Services. And he was saying it would be hugely disruptive to impose this new Glass-Steagall. And one of the things that he says could be a result is it would really hurt credit creation, which obviously in turn would hurt the economy. What would you say, for example, to that? You know, that was pretty much what the banks were saying back in 1932 and 1933. They kept saying no, no, no to Glass-Steagall. They raised all kinds of objections to it. And they kept hammering away at it because they wanted to be able to get access to those deposits in order to fuel more speculative trading. And what this says is no. We can't do that. If you're going to have FDIC insurance, you're going to have savings accounts and checking accounts. They really do have to be walled off. Remember, we had 50 years following the passage of Glass-Steagall in which we had a tiny number of bank failures. That whole boom and bust cycle from 1797 to 1933 went away. And in that period of time, we built a strong, robust middle class. What happened is we started chipping away, and part of the chipping away at that was to say, load up the banks with more and more risk, get them more integrated, and let them get bigger and bigger. So, so, and when that happened, we were in the position of having to bail them out when so, they got into big financial trouble. Senator, I, I will push back, though, on the relative security that you're portraying Glass-Steagall to have given us, because Continental Illinois, yeah. in the early 80s, was the, the seventh 80s. largest bank in America. It yes. failed, almost set off basically a, another major banking crisis. Shouldn't we just tell the American consumer that no matter what we do, there will be bank boom and bust cycles, no matter what the laws and regulations? You can't protect everything. No, that is just wrong. Why? Look at the history. From I, I have looked at history. We're from filled with booms and busts from, from the Dutch no, tulip no, no. crisis to now. From 1797 to 1933, the American banking system crashed about every 15 years. In 1933, we put good reforms in place for which Glass-Steagall was the centerpiece. And from 1933 to the early 1980s, that's a 50-year period, we didn't have any of that. None. We kept the system steady but and secure. That, that, it, and it was only as we started deregulating, you start hitting the SNL crisis. And what did we do? We deregulated some more. And then you hit long term capital management at the end of the 90s. And what did we do as a country? This country continued to deregulate more. And then we hit the big crash in 2008. You are not going to defend the proposition that regulation can never work. I, did, did I didn't work. say regulation never worked, Senator, by, by far and away. And I agree, there were fewer bank failures in that time after Glass-Steagall. Fewer like as in, of the big ones, no. zero. But Continental it, Illinois was the seventh biggest bank in the United States. It, 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 it took failed. 50 years to get but there. But, Senator, you're on we the record, you're on the record saying Glass-Steagall Glass would not have prevented the financial crisis. Not all by itself. That's absolutely right. But what Glass-Steagall can do is it can wind some more of the risk out of the system. It can help bring down the size of the largest banking institutions. Don't forget, you said there was too much concentration in the banking industry in 2008. Now here we are in 2013 and the big four are 30 percent bigger. That puts too much risk back in the system. Well, there's other ways, of, uh, there's other ways of, of shrinking them, um, obviously. But well, with all due respect, Senator, every report I've read, every person I've spoken to says that there's a very, very, very slim chance of this, of this even passing. Well, let me put it this way. If you don't fight for it, the chances are zero. And remember who my partners are in this one. I've got John McCain standing with me. I couldn't ask for a better fighter. We've got Maria Cantwell. We've got Angus King. We've got a Democrat, a Republican, an Independent. All people who are but, willing but, to get but, out Senator, there and Senator, you, you know what the prospects are. The House has voted 37 times to... Uh, you know, on, on Obamacare, to, to yeah. defund it. And uh, it, I mean... Is this any different? I mean, you're making a statement, but, but we want Congress to do things that actually have a chance of, of, of happening and, and become law. This seems like more of the actually, same. Go ahead. No, no, but I was just going to say, you know, I remember going on television multiple times, including here, when I talked about the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. 
when the big banks were spending more than a million dollars a day lobbying against it, and when everybody told me, you'll never get that thing through. Why are you even trying? The chances of passing it are slim to none. And yet, look around. We now have a good, strong Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. It's recovered a half a billion dollars for families who got cheated. It's out there working on behalf of military families, on behalf of seniors, on behalf of students. We got that agency because we got out and fight, fought for it. I actually believe in that.